Every year at 8.30 p.m. on the last Saturday of March, millions of people around the world switch off the lights for an hour to show support for our planet. Started by WWF as a symbolic lights out event in Sydney in 2007, Earth Hour is today one of the largest initiatives for the environment. I got a chance to interview WWF International Director General Marco Lambertini about the main message this year. The main message continues to be that we need to rebalance our relationship with nature. Uh, from today's one, destructive and sustainable, to one in, in, in harmony. And coexistence, and, and we need this for the amazing, to protect the amazing biodiversity of life on the planet. We have the moral duty to share the planet with, but also increasingly understanding that this is important for our own future, for our economy, health, for our happiness. Uh, and in fact, it depends on healthy nature. And this year, so Tower will continue to unite people from all over the world in a moment of solidarity to help shape our future. Uh, with nature at the center of it. So the symbolic gesture of switching off the light uh, for an hour is exactly sending a signal uh, of uh, the need to be more careful, more uh, wise in using the natural, natural resources from energy to many other commodities, timber, fish, food, everything. Uh, avoid waste. So today, I think uh, uh, we understand um, uh, more than ever before that we depend on nature, in fact, more than nature depends on us floods, extreme heat, mega fires, driven by climate change, the COVID pandemic itself, are all stark reminders of that, that we depend on nature. We need a healthy nature. Uh, what has changed from perhaps the last uh, uh, negotiations on the global agreement on nature is that today the evidence of our impact on the planet has never been clearer. Uh, this is a, an important moment. The negotiations in Geneva and the, the meeting that will be hosted in Turning later in the year uh, must see governments to agree on a Paris-style global agreement on nature and biodiversity. Uh, nature positive and a net positive biodiversity goal has to be the global goal. Uh, more forests, more fish in the ocean and rivers, more pollinators in the countryside, more biodiversity, more generally. The agreement uh, uh, needs to embrace such a global, this is an historic opportunity for the agreement to embrace a global goal for nature. And also, uh, it's super important that we, uh, that the government agree also to uh, reduce the footprint of our economic system of nature. Uh, the key sectors like agriculture, like fishing, forestry, infrastructure, extractives, needs to transition towards, for climate, carbon neutral practices, but also for nature, nature positive practices. It's, uh, it's a great opportunity for the world to embrace a global plan for nature, as they did in Paris uh, for climate. And so Kunming could be remembered for nature as uh, Paris is now remembered for climate. China, of course, as the, as the president uh, uh, of COP15, has a, a, as an incredibly important role to play in sing signaling the need to come together around the global plan, the global agreement for nature, and to drive uh, uh, an agreement that uh, embraces the right targets, the right ambition, measurable, uh, and, uh, and it creates accountability uh, in governments, in corporates, in the whole of society, uh, towards delivering it, towards implementing it. Uh, uh, China can play its fundamental role, and uh, I continue to be confident uh, that, uh, that they will.